yeah, Trapped is a really good and satisfying ending to the trilogy. There's some really potent and dark themes here. It's essentially like Doctor Who's equivalent of The Last of Us, where you've got Rose and Danny going across this post-apocalyptic hellscape, fighting off different negative and terrible segments of humanity with dubious ethics and moral grey area and a lot of questions and moments of violence. If you wanted Doctor Who's The Last of Us, where Joel is Rose Tyler, you're going to be pretty well satisfied with the Dimension Canon 3 trapped. I know that fans mock the idea of the proposed Rose Tyler spin-off that Russ T. Davis talked about in an interview years ago offhandedly saying, you know, Rose Tyler, Earth Defender, and realized that would be a pretty silly idea. But however, one of the best ongoing big finish ranges of the past couple of years, in my opinion, has been the Rose Tyler Dimension Canon series, starring Billy Piper, Camille Kaduri, Sean Dingwall, and Mark Benton as Rose uh, Jackie, Pete, and Clive, respectively, essentially filling in the gaps between Doomsday and Turn Left as to what Rose Tyler and everyone over at Pete's World was trying to do to stop the stars from going out in the other different galaxies by using the titular Dimension Canon. And this series... I was kind of skeptical going into it, but when Dimension Canon 2 came out last year, I thought, you know what, let's listen to Dimension Canon 1. And you know what, these box sets are genuinely quite terrific because they're so unexpectedly dark. Like, each episode has a standalone world where Rose, using the Dimension Canon, goes from dimension to dimension, hopping from place to place, and it's essentially because the stars are going out, it's a doomed world, and she's there trying to find the Doctor before the apocalypse of that respective universe can happen. Clive comes back in the first box set because it's a Clive from a different dimension who gets brought into Pete's world. That's why he's there, even though he died in Rose in the first episode of the revival. So, you know, you, you can, the continuity still holds up. And we've, we've had these two really good box sets, Dimension Canon 1 and Other Worlds. And now we have what seems to be the conclusion of this set, which leads into the events of Turn Left, the Dimension Canon 3, Trapped. We've got a trilogy of stories. We've got Sink or Swim by Lizzie Hopley. The Lower Road by Tim Foley, and The Good Samaritan by Helen Goldwyn. Now, Trapped changes the formula for the Dimension Canon series. One and two were single stories where they would hop around from different universe to different universe, and sometimes Jackie would be there, sometimes Pete or, or Clive would be there but it would be a different dimension for every single story. Other Worlds 2 ended on a cliffhanger where Rose found herself on a dimension where there was another Rose, and Jackie Tyler from that universe was a reality TV star, and there was uh, some familial issues and a strange motherhood and stuff like that. That ended on a cliffhanger ending, and I thought that this would start with her trapped on that dimension with a different Rose. However, it turns out that she was able to successfully escape that reality and wind up in a different one, but the dimension cannon is first missing and then damaged, so Rose is unable to escape this dimension, meaning we have a trilogy of stories set in one single dimension, which means this is essentially a three-part epic finale to the Dimension Canon story. Now, Rose Tyler lands on a ship, a big massive cruise liner, which is home to a small subset of humanity in this weird Mad Max style future where society is breaking down, there's some weird anti-life dust particles that are roaming the landscape of the UK and able to kill people. There are telepaths, apparently, whom Jackie Tyler in this reality is one of them. And also, Jackie Tyler did not have a daughter called Rose. They had a child, someone non-binary, called Danny, played by M. Thane, who is essentially, for the purposes of biology and the dimension hopping, is Rose's sibling for lack of a better term here. And this trilogy has Rose and Danny making their way across the UK in this Mad Max-style alternate reality, trying to fix the Dimension Cannon or find the Doctor, whichever happens first, and trying to make sure that they don't die on the way. This is a really well-structured box set where you get a real sense of the reality, this alternative reality Earth, where normally the other box sets have done a great job of setting up very quickly and very effectively each prospective universe. This one, they've got a bit more time to play with, but they're able to delve with the themes a bit more and also expand the universe as the box set unfolds. 
This three-part story, this opens with Sink or Swim by Lizzie Hopley. Rose lands on this ship, befriends Danny, and has to try and find out where the stolen Dimension Cannon is. They go on deck and find themselves attacked by some pretty eccentric wildlife. Let's play a clip from Sink or Swim. Get the nets higher! Get underneath! What is it? Electric eels. Lethal. They attack in shoals like flying fish. But with stories high, they fly high. These are nets. They're bed sheets. It's not a fishing boat, Rose. We need to catch them for food. Watch out! Watch out! Don't let it touch you! They're busier in the day. The light feeds them. It feeds them. They're huge! Let me help. Don't touch her. She's been trampled on. Her head's bleeding. Drag her back from the deck. Do you have, like, a, a sick bay? Leave her. We need help stocking the pool. There are people dying here. We all die if we starve to death. Leave her. Still need a crew, don't you? Or are you planning to rule this floating wreck alone? Pull the injured inside. You know medicine? I've worked with doctors, yeah. You might have just saved your life. Get Caitlin to show her the theatre. I'll take her. She can bug with me. All right, stay with her and show her the greenhouse. Put to work. She might live. Get the live ones to the pool! You put mutant fish in the swimming pool to eat or torture the crew? Welcome to the Ocean Dame. Come on, next to the pod, the greenhouse is the best place to work. The pod? Up there. Oh. Uh, it's built for tourists. Some viewing pod that swings out over the water. We use it for a lookout. It's like someone took a piece of the London Eye and stuck it on a ship. The what? Never mind. Let's get to cover. <laughs> what I really liked about this particular story is that, and I know this is going to sound like unrealistically high praise, but I'll try and qualify it in a moment, is that this is essentially Rose Tyler's equivalent of the Caves of Androzani. Now, Sink or Swim, or this box set in general, is not on the level of, like, the Caves of Androzani, aka the best Doctor Who episode of all time. But Sink or Swim effectively puts Rose Tyler on the Ocean Dame, this cruise liner, which is a setting which has absolutely no use for her good nature. She is a optimistic hero from another parallel universe who has had adventures with the Doctor, and there is absolutely no tolerance for that on this setting, which is why I compare it to, say, The Caves of Androzani, which takes the Fifth Doctor and puts him in this Vietnam parallel, and that kindness, that schoolboy charm that the Fifth Doctor brings to his adventures, no, nah, no use there, not gonna happen. And that's what happens on the Ocean Dame. And if you thought that the weird idea of the big, massive electric eels was weird wait till you see what they've done with the bacteria that's all i'll say about sink or swim in a spoiler capacity but sink or swim is a really effective opener which establishes the relationship between rose and their sibling in quotes danny somebody who has grown up in this like post-apocalyptic world doesn't really know their father jackie is a telepath that has been ostracized by the community but is still very very useful for predicting en uh, enemy behavior and enemy patterns and stuff like that but they'll kill her at the first opportunity they get so it's a it's a survival story trying to save Jackie, get Danny off of the ship so that they can find the Dimension Cannon or fix it, whatever comes first, find the Doctor, whatever they need to do. It's a frantic story. In the interviews, Billy Piper said that this is like the most exhausting script that she's recorded for big finish because rose is like really exerting herself physically in this story really challenging story particularly the third act when everything goes absolutely tits up there's some really great action set pieces in sink or swim lizzie hopley's script is super kinetic while also being able to remember the lovely quiet character beats the lovely character interactions between rose and jackie and also the newly introduced danny who's played brilliantly by m thane over the course of this box set i do wish that jackie had more to do over the course of the box set generally but she does make a great impression in this first story and it is essentially just sort of like world building you do have rose who has been put in this mad max water world style post-apocalyptic future alternate reality with different factions and war zones and scrap uh, boats that are like they fight each other with bows and arrows and guns whatever they, they can get the ammunition for and rose is trying to act like a reverse virus where her optimism her good nature her faith in the doctor trying to influence those around her and in this particular universe they're just not having it. Which takes us to the second part of this story, The Lower Road by Tim Foley, where Rose and Danny are trekking the wastelands of the United Kingdom. 
trying to find a way to fix the dimension cannon and they discover a community called the high road which is this small little settlement at the top of this hill and in the valley below is the anti-life which is this like i mentioned earlier this these weird dust particles that are able to kill people by touch there's storms of it going across the countryside it can target and attack telepaths specifically which is why danny's in such danger in an environment like this and for whatever reason the anti-life in what they call the low road just leaves the high road alone no idea why they just do it so rose and danny start settling into this community because at the beginning danny gets injured danny needs to get uh, their injuries recovered and healed and stuff so they're kind of stuck in this environment and rose tries to make peace with lara who is the leader of the settlement played by heather coombs and lara is trying to find her daughter lex played by chelsea little and the two are cleaning up some graffiti on the walls of one of the settlements let's play a clip from the lower road How's your sibling? Danny's fine, sleeping now. Thanks so much for helping us. I, I, I don't know if I said that before. Just glad you ran into us first and not the hikers. Your servant told me what they are. Hope I never have to. <sighs> don't travel around at night. Have you decided if you're staying the evening? Won't be long before the sun sets. Guess we have to now. You're still wary of us. A little. Understandable. But I do like a leader who's willing to scrub a dirty wall herself. <laughs> <laughs> Who says I'm the leader? Basically everyone I've spoken to so far. Had a little poke around the lobby, met some people. We've got a good setup here. Better than what we came from. They all seem happy, for a start. And you're right about the lift shafts. Hmm. Critter stew tonight. <laughs> what sort of critter? Ugh, best you don't ask. Lovely. Hang on, what is this we're washing off? I thought it was graffiti, but this is a list of names, isn't it? Names of the departed. What? Didn't anyone say? This is the memorial wall. Then why are we washing them off? Got to make room. Oh, this feels wrong. What do you mean? We're scrubbing out people, names of people. Were they lost to the anti-life? Most of them, yeah. They get three months up here, more or less. Then we have to clear the way. Always more names to write. Oh, <laughs> ominous. So, I think that the character of Lara, who you heard in that clip there, is probably one of the most fascinating characters, not only like in this box set, but in the whole Dimension Canon saga that we've had. An incredibly fascinating character, and the performance from Heather Coombs is maybe one of the best Big Finish guest performances of this entire year. Outstanding performance playing a character with insane moral complexity, where you've got this leader who you have to wonder if somebody can do soulless things while still having a soul, can act inhumanely while still being human at the end of the day. It's, this is a community, the High Road, which has had to make some incredible sacrifices which are unveiled gradually in Tim Foley's meticulously uh, structured script. Over the span of this hour-long adventure, it's meticulously unfolding. We're learning more over the course of it and you kind of ask you, you kind of come away from the lower road asking some pretty intense philosophical questions and you know what tim foley has been on one hell of a roll over the past few months not only did he write sigil you know that awesome torchwood story from a few months back but he also wrote pursuit of the nightjar which we talked about last week my favorite big finish story of the year so far he did dead man talking as well from the diary of river song the orphan quarter tim tim foley is just over the past few months as just back to back bangers and this is no exception the lower road is a really fascinating complex story about strained familial relationships you not only have the new burgeoning relationship between rose and danny but also the unfinished business between danny and jackie and also rose and jackie as well though it's her version of jackie You've got the complex um, maternal relationship between Lara and Lex and some other of the familial connections that unfold that unfold over the course of the story. It's a really sensitive story about 
familial relationships in the apocalypse and it's really really effective and a lot of that is because billy piper absolutely rises to the occasion here she has not lost a step as rose tyler and this is such a dramatically impactful performance particularly as the stakes start escalating as the story progresses and rose has to continually act stronger and act smarter and act harder in order to try and maintain the peace in order to protect danny which is what she vowed to do for jackie it's a really interesting dynamic and a great relationship and like i said i do think that um billy piper and m thane have terrific chemistry with each other which is tested over the course of the last story the good samaritan where once again rose and danny find themselves in another colony and this one appears quite peaceful from the outside people are given marks for good behavior for doing well for helping to contribute to the community and there are also a lot of telepaths here as well who are keeping the anti-life at bay however they are on the clock there's a short time limit there and because rose tyler knows absolutely nothing Thing about this universe because she's just dropped in from the sky via dimension cannon a few weeks ago so this group have a lot of questions for her arrests her and danny let's play a quick clip from the good samaritan written by helen goldwyn cheers we'll just wait here then that doctor guy said we'd only be in the cells while they're getting our test results and you believed him i don't know maybe he was quite polite yeah weird same as the blokes who brought us in do forgive me while I stick all these needles in you. Yeah, and confiscate your stuff. They took my travel disc. Maybe they can fix it? They have got working medical equipment. Yeah, and comms. Oh, and an electricity generator, judging by these lights. You might be in luck for once. What were all those tests for, anyway? I'm not sure. They're looking for contamination. Who are you? The name's Mac. I'm Rose, they're Danny. What are you in here for? Just passing through. <coughs> I take it you're externals. Come again? From outside the domes? Yeah, you? Oh, I haven't been outside these walls since I was a boy. You're not missing much. What did you mean about contamination? Do they think we're sick? Something like that. They need to know if you're dangerous or useful. I didn't want to play a clip that was too deep into The Good Samaritan because there's a lot of interesting spoilerific stuff over the course of it. So I, I wanted to have a relatively spoiler-free clip. The clip there, uh, you heard Mac voiced by Robert McCafferty. Awesome voice there. He's got multiple roles over the course of this story. And uh, he, yeah, he's, he's just really, really good overall. Uh, there's also um, uh, Bailey Patrick, who plays a character called Chand, who is essentially Rose's uh, kind of surrogate companion over the course of this story because she's separated from Danny for a lot of it and uh, Chand is a really cool and interesting character with a lot of history there's a lot of exposition there but Bailey Patrick is able to imbue it with a lot of humanity great like just great guest performances over the course of this box set which is to be expected it's directed by Helen Goldwyn Helen Goldwyn is the is a terrific actors director not saying that there aren't all the actor directors at Big Finish but Helen Goldwyn is the director you bring in when you've got your big stars you know like your Billy Piper like your David Warners like your Christopher Recklestons, etc etc so it's no wonder that this box set has got a terrific awesome cast throughout the course of it but in terms of uh, the good samaritan it's an interesting story it i think that in the the climax it's a little bit rushed to get from the ending of the story to the setup for turn left I wish that there was maybe a little bit more time for Rose to reflect at the end of the story just what happened because she's been in this particular dimension for a very very long time. If her previous box set adventures are indicative of just her general pattern while searching for the Doctor, she's only in these universes for a couple of hours or a couple of days at most before hopping out and going to the next one. In Trapped, she's in this alternative England for several days or several weeks. I, the actual time span is a little bit ambiguous. Maybe it's more clear but I, I, I can't quite recall off the top of my head. Either way, just the amount of time she's been in this England and the amount of time that she spent with Danny and everything that they've experienced over the span of this story, you'd think that maybe she'd need a few minutes to recuperate, but then it's immediately, we've only got one minute left of this story, we've got to set up turn left. 
Apart from that though, this is a really well paced and terrific box set that satisfyingly concludes the Dimension Canon trilogy of box sets. Like I said, don't sleep on these ones. These are especially good. I still think that Dimension Canon 1 is the best of the three because it just, you don't quite expect it happening and the variety of places that they visit is really really interesting and the cast is great as well we've got sean dingwall here as well sean dingwall's not in the other box sets unfortunately but he really makes his presence felt in the first one definitely listen to the first box set dimension canon one if you're into it be rest assured that the rest of them are also really, really good. Trapped is probably my second favorite of the three. Yeah, Trapped is a really good and satisfying ending to the trilogy. There's some really potent and dark themes here. It's essentially like Doctor Who's equivalent of The Last of Us, where you've got Rose and Danny going across this post-apocalyptic hellscape, fighting off different negative and terrible segments of humanity with dubious ethics and moral gray area and a lot of questions and moments of violence so yeah if you wanted doctor who's the last of us where joel is rose tyler and ellie is danny you're gonna be pretty well satisfied with the with the dimension canon 3 trapped this was really good terrific work all around from all three of these box sets and i'm glad that it stuck the landing at the end this is something that you kind of would maybe mock at you know mock the idea of a rose tyler turn left prequel trilogy of box sets but these are very very good be rest assured that Rose Tyler as a character is still fascinating and interesting and just her presence in these settings is almost like worthwhile a premise in its own right. Like, like I said, having a companion of the Doctor with optimism and ingenuity and hope, being put in hopeless situations time and time again and what that does to her. Really good box set.